Once upon a time, there was a little girl. Once her rich father married an evil stepmother. She settled in the house with her two daughters. Their faces were beautiful and white, but their hearts were evil and cruel. And then came a difficult time for the poor girl. From morning until late in the evening, they forced her to do dirty work, carry water, heat the stove, cook food, wash dishes, and do laundry. And besides, the half-sisters did their best to upset her as much as possible they mocked her, poured peas and wheat into the ashes, and she had to sit and pick them out. In the evening, when she was tired of work, she had to go to bed not in bed, but on the floor, next to the stove. And because she was always in ash, dust, and dirty, the sisters called her Cinderella. But then it happened one day that the king started a feast, which was supposed to last for three whole days, and called all the beautiful girls of the country to the holiday so that his son could choose a bride for himself. When the two named sisters learned that they, too, could come to the feast, they instantly began to dress up and preen. Cinderella also wanted to go dancing, but her stepmother did not let her go, because she had no dress or shoes, and she was dirty. And then the evil stepmother poured a bowl of wheat into the ashes and said that if Cinderella collected it in two hours, then she could go with her sisters. Cinderella went out into the garden and cried. And then two white doves flew in, followed by a whole flock of different birds. They swooped down on the ash and began to peck, and so they chose all the grains in a bowl. In less than an hour, they finished their work, and everyone flew back. Cinderella brought a bowl to her stepmother, began to rejoice, thinking that she could go to the feast. But her stepmother would not let her in any way. She turned her back on Cinderella and hurried with her two daughters to the ball. When there was no one left at home, Cinderella sat down on the floor and cried with grief. And then two white doves flew in, followed by a whole flock of different birds, and they threw off their dress and shoes shiny and all in gold. She quickly put on this dress and came to the bride. They saw her stepsisters and stepmother and thought that it must be some strange princess she was so beautiful in her golden dress. It never occurred to them that it was Cinderella. The prince came out to meet her, took her hand, and they began to dance. And he liked Cinderella so much that he did not want to dance with any other girl. She danced until the evening and wanted to return home, but the prince asked her to see her off. He wanted to know whose beautiful girl this is and where she lives. But Cinderella ran away from him and climbed onto the dovecot. The prince ordered to destroy the dovecot, but there was no one in it. And nowhere near could he find his beautiful stranger. No one could have guessed that Cinderella was rescued by pigeons that took her home. The prince was upset and went to the palace with his head down. And suddenly he saw a shoe lifted it up it was so small and elegant and all of pure gold. The prince guessed that when Cinderella ran away from him, the shoe from her left foot remained on one of the steps. The prince was delighted and ordered to find the mistress of this shoe, and to whom it suits he will marry that one. The parents returned from the ball, they saw that Cinderella was asleep in her shirt on ash, and a dim light was on by the stove. Both sisters went to their rooms, hoping that tomorrow they would be lucky enough to put on the golden slipper. The next day, the prince came to their house and said that everyone who wants to try on the shoe of his future wife should come out. Two sisters came out, and the stepmother locked Cinderella in the house and did not let her out. The older sister tried it on a small shoe. The younger sister tried it on the shoe as great. The prince was about to leave, but Cinderella climbed out of the window and ran out to him. And she put on a shoe, and it just fit her. The prince looked into her eyes and recognized in her the very beautiful girl with whom he danced. 
He took Cinderella, put her on a horse and rode off to play a wedding with her. And he ordered the sisters and stepmother to be locked in their house and never let them out of there. This is how they were punished for their malice and deceit. My grandfather planted a turnip and it grew big, very big. Never seen such a turnip in the villages. And so my grandfather went to pick a turnip. Pulls pulls, pulls pulls, but cannot pull. The grandfather did not know what to do. And so, in that way, but it will not pull out in any way. Then the grandfather called the grandmother to pull the turnip. An old woman came, grabbed her grandfather by the back, and they began to pull the turnip together. The grandmother is for the grandfather, and the grandfather for the turnip. They pull pull, pull pull, but they just can't pull it. It's just some kind of trouble. The grandfather pondered and realized that it was time to call the granddaughter for help. And they began to call the little girl at the top of their voices, so much, so that the whole village trembled. The granddaughter came running, took hold of the grandmother's skirt, and again they began to pull the turnip. The granddaughter for the grandmother, the grandmother for the grandfather, and the grandfather for the turnip. They pull pull, pull pull, but they cannot pull. The old people were upset, because such a turnip disappears. Then the granddaughter decided to call her dog, Bug, so that at least she could help pull the turnip. Bug came running, grabbed her granddaughter by the handkerchief, and they began to pull the turnip together. A bug for a granddaughter, a granddaughter for a grandmother, a grandmother for a grandfather, and a grandfather for a turnip. They pull pull, pull pull, but they cannot pull again. The grandfather and grandmother were even more upset, because the uneaten turnip will disappear. Suddenly the bug barked and ran away. The dog returned not alone, but with a cat. She grabbed the beetle by the tail, and began to pull the turnip all together. A cat for a bug, a bug for a granddaughter, a granddaughter for a grandmother, a grandmother for a grandfather, and a grandfather for a turnip. Pull pull, pull pull, but not stretch. The old people were upset with their granddaughter. They will not see a turnip. Suddenly the cat ran into the barn. She was gone for a long time, and she returned not alone, but with a mouse. The grandfather and the woman, and the granddaughter and the beetle, began to ask the mouse for help. She wagged her tail, squeaked twice, and then grabbed the cat's fur with her little paws. And again they pulled the turnip together. A mouse for a cat, a cat for a bug, a bug for a granddaughter, a granddaughter for a grandmother, a grandmother for a grandfather, and a grandfather for a turnip. Pull pull, pull pull, and pulled the turnip. And so the grandfather decided to share the turnip. He took half for himself, gave a third to his grandmother, a little less to his granddaughter, a piece of the beetle, a half of a piece for a cat and a very small crumb for a mouse. The animals were offended by their grandfather because they helped in the same way, and he divided the turnip dishonestly. A year has passed. Grandfather planted the turnip again, and it grew larger than before. For a long time such a turnip has not been seen in the villages. Cool. And so my grandfather went to pick a turnip. Pulls pulls, pulls pulls and this and that, hmm. but will not pull. The grandfather did not know what to do. And I decided to call my grandmother for help again. They began to pull the turnip together. The grandmother is for the grandfather, and the grandfather for the turnip. They pull pull, pull pull, but they just can't pull it. Then the grandmother called her granddaughter. The granddaughter came running, and they pulled the turnip together. The granddaughter for the grandmother, the grandmother for the grandfather, and the grandfather for the turnip. Pull pull, pull pull, but not stretch. The grandfather was upset and went to ask the animals for help. He called Bug, but she only turned her face away, wagged her tail and ran away. Grandfather found a cat, and she climbed onto the roof of the barn. Then the old man went to the mouse, but she did not listen to him either. Then the grandfather realized that the animals were offended by him for not honestly sharing the turnip. After all, without a mouse, a cat or a bug, grandfather cannot see a turnip. The old man thought, collected his thoughts, and went to the animals again. He apologized to the bug, asked the cat for forgiveness and promised the best piece of turnip for the mouse. Then the animals agreed to help their grandfather. Okay. And they began to pull the turnip together. A mouse for a cat, a cat for a bug, a bug for a granddaughter, a granddaughter for a grandmother, a grandmother for a grandfather, and a grandfather for a turnip. Pull pull, pull pull, and pulled the turnip. Baba baked turnips. For a long time such delicious turnip has not been seen in the villages. And the grandfather divided the turnip equally, a piece for himself, grandmother, and granddaughter. 
A bug with a cat and even a mouse were received each piece. Everyone was happy. So, they lived in peace and harmony happily ever after.